Welcome back to my channel. This is the third video I've done on the ICANN Chinese carbon wheels. This is a, a super light pair of carbon wheels um, and I've done two videos. One was an unboxing of these wheels. Another one was a complete inspection of the wheels. And during that inspection, I, the one thing that I, the one issue I discovered was that the spokes are twisted a little and uh, the spokes are bladed spokes. So when you twist the bladed spoke, you, you lose the arrow advantages of the spoke because instead of them slicing through the wind with a straight knife-like edge, they're twisted. So the wide part of the spoke presents itself to the air and the wheels actually slow you down rather than speed you up. So to fix it, you have to twist the spokes so that they're aligned correctly aerodynamically. And to do that, you want to do it carefully so you don't throw the wheel out of true or change the spoke tension too much. Um, and you end up with a nice arrow wheel. So that's what we're going to do today. Requires a couple of uh, special tools that aren't very expensive. Um, and we'll go over that today and I'll show you how it's done because you might get a pair of wheels uh, with bladed spokes and notice that they're twisted. And what's the point of having bladed spokes if they slow you down? I'm going to use two special tools to work on the uh, uh, bladed spokes. And one's a uh, Park Tool BSH4, which is a bladed spoke holder, allows you to hold onto the spokes and not damage the spokes. And I'm gonna use a Park internal um, nipple wrench that holds the spoke, holds the nipple inside the rim from the top. Uh, by grabbing the nipple from the top, instead of grabbing the nipple at the rim, you leave more room to hold the spoke with the spoke holder. Um, this spoke holder has four different size holders. I'm gonna use the smallest holder so that I don't have to keep finding it again. I'm gonna mark it so that I know which one it is. Here's what the tools look like if you use a conventional spoke wrench that actually fits on the flats of the nipple below the rim. Because it takes up space, it pushes the spoke holder tool lower. The spoke holder tool in this position, when you go to straighten the spoke, uh, remove the twist, you can actually introduce a twist. You can actually bend the spoke, turn it into sort of a spiral. It's much, much harder to fix that. Um, once you use the internal spoke holder, it allows you to move the spoke holder almost all the way to the top, very close to the nipple, where you're not going to bend the spoke or create a twist, uh, a set or change in the shape of the spoke. That's what you're trying to avoid. Also, working with the tools this way, you look down from the top which allows you to sight across this horizontal line to make sure the spoke is parallel. You can compare this to the hub. It makes it a lot easier. If you don't have and you don't want to buy a special arrow bladed spoke holder, you can actually make your own. It turns out that a hacksaw, most hacksaws have a blade that's just about the same width as the Supreme arrow bladed spokes. So if you have a tire lever hanging around, plastic tire lever that's on the wide side. You can take the plastic tire lever, you can put it in a bench vise, any kind of vise, or hold it however you can. And if you cut a nice straight slot in the tire lever, you'll find that it will fit right over the bladed spoke. And then you can hold it just as if you had a custom tool that you bought. I wanted to look at some arrow spokes and explain a little more so you can see that there are different types. Today, most arrow spokes look like this, the Supreme arrow spokes. They're sort of oval. But we have had real bladed spokes that are wide and flat in the past like this. I mentioned you can make your own tool. You could also use a small adjustable wrench. That'll work nice too to hold the tool. It's, it's metal though, so if the surface isn't smooth on the jaws, you could scratch the spoke, a black spoke. You could end up with silver marks. You could put some uh, electrical tape on the jaws to fix that. 
The key thing and the reason uh, we talk about twist and rotating the spokes and making them non-aero, um, you're trying to just turn the spoke and orient it the correct way when you're working on the spoke. What you want to avoid, and the reason that I have these flat spokes so that I can show you, what you want to avoid is turning the spoke in such a way that you actually twist the spoke this way. Notice how by being heavy-handed I've actually damaged the spoke. I've weakened the metal. I've actually twisted it around itself. That's what you don't want to happen. That's why you work so carefully. When you get done orienting your spokes the right way and taking the twist out, you want them, want them to be just like they were when you started. You don't want any spiral, any twist, or any bend in there. So get, go at it carefully and easily the way I show. I made this little model to show you how to work with the bladed spokes to remove the twist when the spokes are rotated and not arrow. So in order to understand the model, you have to follow along and use your imagination. This little steel ruler right here represents the rim. This rod through the center represents the spoke. And this little wing nut represents the spoke nipple. So this is the top of the wheel, this is the center of the wheel, and this is the rim here. Now watch what happens if I just turn the nipple. If I just turn the nipple, I'm going to hold the spoke, just turn the nipple. What's happening to the rim? You can see that the rim is changing position. If you just turn the nipple when you're working on your bladed spoke, trying to make it arrow again, take the twist out, you will change the position of the rim, you'll change the tension in the spoke and the wheel will go out of true and out of round. Also, if we go back to where we started, you see the ruler acting as the rim goes almost straight. If we were to hold the nipple and just turn the spoke to get rid of the twist, the same thing happens. No matter how small a turn we make, if we turn the spoke, the same thing happens. We change the position of the rim, we change the tension of the spoke, the wheel goes out of true or out of round. So, the secret and the top tip for working with uh, bladed spokes and making them arrow again and taking the twist out is to turn the nipple and the spoke together at exactly the same rate. That's the way to do it. You hold the nipple with the nipple holder in the top of the rim. You turn the spoke with the bladed spoke holder. So you're holding the nipple at the top of the rim. You're holding the spoke with the bladed spoke holder. And you turn both tools very carefully together so that the spoke and the nipple turn the same amount until the spoke is the oriented the way you want it, back aerodynamically. That's how you fix the spokes without changing the tension of the spokes and knocking the wheel out of true and out of round, or you have your best chance. It'll change a tiny bit, but not so much that it should cause major problems. All right, so we're finally gonna get to fixing the aero spokes, making them aerodynamic again. So I put the wheel in a truing stand and I've tightened it down really well in the truing stand. If you're working in a frame, you probably want to clamp it in the frame because you're going to use some force when you turn the spoke and the nipple together and you can pull the thing right out. You can pull the wheel right out of the truing stand. It won't hurt it, but you'll probably have to start all over again. So that you know where you started and where you're going to finish, start at the valve stem hole in the rim. And then you can, you can work in either direction. Just remember you started there. And I'm gonna demonstrate on one side of the front wheel, because once you see what I do, you'll be able to do it on the rear wheel, on the front wheel, on both sides. It's not a complicated process. So we start at the valve hole. I'm gonna go this way, and I'm gonna start with the first spoke on the left-hand side. I am right-handed, so I'm going to hold the nipple driver in my right hand, and I'll hold the spoke holder in my left hand. That works for me. Then when I 
do the other side of the spokes, the other side of the wheel. I'll flip the wheel in the truing stand. That way I hold things the same way. I can keep track and I can watch really well. So it's a little tricky to find the nipple sometimes because the nipples are at an angle and the hole inside the rim is pretty big. Inside there it's like a hollow cavity. So we're going to put the, the tool to hold the spoke and we're going to bring it up Make sure we have a good purchase and we're up high, right near where the spoke becomes round again. And then we're going to look at the tool and we can see that it's not parallel with the axle, with the hub. So we're going to hold the tool. Remember now, we're going to try to turn the spoke and the nipple at the same time. So I tried to turn both and I'm trying to feel that they're both turning together. And then I sight from above. And when I have a horizontal line going through a horizontal line, like a gun sight, I know it's good. One more test is to feel the spoke. Press on it and feel it. You can feel that it's flat. You can also feel when it's twisted. So now we'll move to the next spoke. See, I can't, it, sometimes it takes a little while to find it. There it is. The nipple inside. Put the tool back on again. Another one that's out. You can see how out it is, how far out it is. See the angle. So now with the, using the two tools together, I fix this one. It's actually really satisfying. It's not hard to do. And if you turn both together, you shouldn't knock the wheel too far out of true. Take your time, keep checking. You want a good purchase on the nipple inside the rim. The nipple's aluminum, so if you don't hold on to it well, you could round the edges. These tools hold well though, these nipple drivers. That one's done. Back and check it. I don't think you can see it on the camera. It's too small. Went a little past. Go back a little bit. Nice. That one's way out. Now it's happy. Good. There we go, nine spokes fixed. Now, nine more on this side and then 24 on the rear wheel and it'll be good to go. That's how you do it. Okay, now we're looking at the front wheel after I've untwisted the spokes and put them all back in an arrow position. It's looking pretty good up and down and side to side. If anything, surprisingly, might actually be a little better than it was initially when we looked at it. So that's the front wheel. Now let's look at the rear wheel. Here's the rear wheel after the spokes have been untwisted. All the spokes are in the arrow position now. 
This one hasn't changed very much either. This one is still as good, maybe even better than it was before we did the, this work on the spokes. Well, that wraps up this crash course in fixing twisted spokes on uh, wheels. I hope it helps. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please put them below and I'll answer. Always happy to answer questions on wheel truing or anything else. Um, I know we covered a lot of ground here, but hopefully it clears up uh, how not easy but not difficult it is to fix a problem like this on wheels so that you might want to give it a try yourself. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.